ಗಣಪತಿ ಹವಾಮಹೆ ಕವಿ ಕವೀನಾಮುಪಮಶ್ರವಸ್ತಮ ಜ್ಯೇಷ್ಠರಾಜಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಣ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಣಸ್ಪತ ಶೃಣ್ವನ್ನೂತಿ ಸೀದ ಸಾಧನ ಶ್ರೀ ಮಹಾಗಣಾಧಿಪತ ನಮಃ ಗುರುರ್ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಗುರುರ್ವಿಷ್ಣು ಗುರುರ್ದೇವೋ ಮಹೇಶ್ವರ ಗುರುಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ ಪರಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ಸದಾ ಶಿವ ಸಮಾರಂಭ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಮಧ್ಯಮ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರು ಪರಂಪರಾ ಓ ಡಿಯರ್ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ಟುಡೇ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಎಲೆವೆಂತ್ ಅಧ್ಯಾಯ ಎಲೆವೆಂತ್ ಅಧ್ಯಾಯ ಆಫ್ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತ ಇನ್ ದ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ವಿ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟೆಡ್ ದಿ ಟೆಂತ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಎ ಬ್ರೀಫ್ ರಿವ್ಯೂ ಆಫ್ ಬ್ರೀಫ್ ಸೇ ಓವರ್ ಆಲ್ ವ್ಯೂ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಟೆಂತ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಟೆಂತ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ವಾಸ್ ವಿಭೂತಿ ಯೋಗ ವಿಭೂತಿ ಈಸ್ ದಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಕ್ಲೂಸಿವ್ ಸ್ಪೆಷಲ್ ಮ್ಯಾನಿಫೆಸ್ಟೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮನ್ ಸೊ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಸಟನ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪ್ಲರಿ ಸೇ ಫೀಚರ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ವರ್ ಡೆಮಾನ್ಸ್ಟ್ರೇಟೆಡ್ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ಅರ್ಜುನ certain exemplary things certain exemplary manifestations which were all powerful all vibhuti visheshana bhavanam all exemplary magnificent such excellent manifestations were presented before brahman before arjuna and at the end of the chapter lord krishna said vishtabhyah midam krusnam ekamshena sthito jagat so that is vishtabhya having made the entire universe stable with merely a fraction of my power <coughs> ಏಕಾಂಶೇನ ಏಕಾಂಶೇನ ಈಸ್ ವಿತ್ 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 ಎ ಫ್ರ್ಯಾಕ್ಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೈ ಪವರ್ ವಿಷ್ಟಭ್ಯ ಹಂ ಜಗತ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ವಿಷ್ಟಭ್ಯ ಹಂ ಇದ ಜಗತ್ ಇದ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಏಕಾಂಶೇನ ಸ್ಥಿತೋ ಜಗತ್ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಹಿ ಸೆಡ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಎಂಟೈರ್ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಮೈ ಮ್ಯಾನಿಫೆಸ್ಟೇಷನ್ ವೈ ಟಾಕ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದೀಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಕ್ಲೂಸಿವ್ ಮ್ಯಾನಿಫೆಸ್ಟೇಷನ್ ಬಟ್ ದಿ ಎಂಟೈರ್ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಮೈ ಓನ್ ಮ್ಯಾನಿಫೆಸ್ಟೇಷನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಿ ಎಂಟೈರ್ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಕೆಪ್ಟ್ ಸ್ಟಡಿ ಬೈ ಮೈ ಬೈ Uh, the power uh, by a fraction of my power so that was the last line so which means that the whole vishwam the whole universe as we see it the whole universe has to be looked at as a manifestation of brahman only so that is what we have to see so that is where we are so in that context the 11th adhyaya starts so naturally from 10th adhyaya the next progress should be not merely to see some exclusive features for the sake of upasana <coughs> so those exclusive features were presented before arjuna for the sake of upasana arjuna means common man for all of us okay so and so among uh, vrishni samang vayam vasudeva among muni sayam bhargava among kavi sayam shukracharya so and so so and so so and so they were all presented as a sort of role models before all of us and some of them are for upasana some of the divine uh, say examples which were given there are for upasana so they are for all this upasana upasana is what what is upasana upasana is something which is done with a bheda drushti <coughs> bheda drushti is the notion of duality the notion of duality that god is something different i am something different so that is with a notion of duality so from there a slightly higher stage will be to see the entire vishwam including yourself as manifestation of that this is the next thing this is the next level so this again there are some limitations we will come to that so this is the next stage from this upasana upasana of a limited thing is the primary stage from that stage the next stage is to see the say the lord's presence everywhere so that is vishwarupa if you see the word vishwam vishwam i think we ex- i explained that word earlier also because this word we can we come across in vishnu sahasranam also vishnu sahasranam where the very first shloka says vishwam vishnur vashatkarah bhuta bhavya bhavat prabhu that is how it starts isn't it vishwam so there shankaracharya has again given a very elaborate meaning for that vishwam so he has given the etymological meanings and explained so one etymological meaning is visha praveshane that is you know the word pravesha what is you know the word pravesha something is entering pravesha enter pra plus visha it becomes pravesha pravishati pravesha is noun pravisha pravishati not pravisha pravishati uh, is the verb isn't it vishati visha so visha means to enter that is what is the, what is it that is entering tat srushtva tadevanu pravishat that is what upanishad says that is having created he entered them 
So then there again there is a very elaborate explanation for that what is meant by creation and what is meant by anupravesha that is entering that. So entering is the thing. Visha is praveshane. Vishati iti vishwam that is Vishnuhu. So that is that is that all pervading consciousness which is there present in every buddhi guha. All things are appearing and in all these things that Chaitanya is there. And because of that Chaitanyam or consciousness of the Supreme Reality, it is that all these things are having so many different names and forms. But the existence and the, say consciousness belongs to that Supreme Brahman. Isn't it? So that is what we have seen. So this whole Vishwam should be seen as a manifestation because this is Vishati. The very name indicates that that Supreme Brahman has entered this whole thing. So that is one thing. Then another uh, say etymological meaning given is Vishanti Vishwani Bhutani Asmin that is Pralaye Pralaye Samaye that is at the time of uh, say resolution uh, say all the all these universes not only this uh, may say this uh, <coughs> one particular universe there may be several universes all the universes they resolve into one supreme Brahman. So that is what it means Vishanti Vishwani Bhutani all the beings of the whole universe, all these things at the time of pralaya, they all enter and then again they are recreated in another cycle of creation. We, we talk about the cycles of creation, not one particular cycle, but so many cycles of creation. So this is another meaning. So that again is, in that Supreme Brahman only all these things are manifesting. So then, what exactly is, is this thing we are seeing when we say that Vishwa Rupa, is it the real Rupam of the Supreme Brahman? The Supreme Brahman does not have a Rupam. The Supreme Brahman is of the nature of just existence, consciousness and all pervading uh, say feature. But then, <coughs> then what is it that we are seeing? What we are seeing is what is called Mayamayam Rupam. So that is what uh, uh, say Nilakanta Acharya here says. What you are seeing is, this is Vishwarupam Mayamayam Vastavam tu rupam maya titam iti aishwaramiti purushottameti cha padabhyam labhyate. That is what I mean, Nilakantacharya is writing here <coughs> under the uh, say second shloka. So, anyway, what, what we are seeing here is in this Vishwarupa Sandarshana Yoga is, is it okay? Yeah. Mike is okay. No, no problem. <coughs> so, what we are seeing in this uh, say Vishwarupa Yoga is the maya mayam rupam. <coughs> that which is manifest in Maya. We know that uh, as students of Vedanta, we know by now that the Supreme Brahman has no connection with this world, no physical di uh, direct connection with this world. There is a power in him called Maya. That creative power called Maya, it is something which manifests in that Supreme Brahman. And this Maya, in that Maya, all these things, they appear as though they are created. So that is the, that is the overall structure. So, in this overall structure, what we are seeing is, and for everything that is that we see, for example, if you see some pen or you see some paper, there is something called a material cause for this, isn't it? If I see the pen, the material cause is plastic. Plastic is another form of earth only. It is another form of earth only. So, this earth is the upadana karana for various things. So, similarly, for the whole universe, what is the upadana karana? Upadana Karanam is that material cause, that directly some material, some material has to be there. What is the material cause for this? Is it, is the Brahman which is the material cause for this? Brahma is not the material cause, but still we say Brahma is the cause for the whole creation. What is the material cause? Maya is the material cause. It is called Maya Parinama Vadam. And Brahma Vivarta, Brahman, the supreme reality is appearing as this Vishwam. The supreme reality is appearing as Vishwam, whereas in this Maya, all these transformations are taking place. So that is the overall structure of this doc our doctrine. So what we see is the only that we have, say appearance in that Maya, and then the real nature of supreme Brahman is what is called Purushottama. In the 15th chapter of Gita, we are going to see uh, he is at it, that 15th chapter name is Purushottama Prapti Yoga. Purushottama Prapti. There, Purushottama is defined as one who is beyond this aksharam and one who is beyond that aksharam. That is, one who is beyond this whole universe and one who is beyond that maya is that supreme reality. So that is how it, it say that the word purushottama is explained there. So that is what we see. 
and uh, now we will come to this chapter which is called Vishwarupa Sandarshana Yoga. So this Vishwarupa, that manifestation we are going to see. If the difference, the basic difference between the 10th chapter and 11th chapter, we have to now understand, we have to understand. In the 10th chapter, we have only seen some, some special examples, some exclusive examples, some special manifestations. Oh, Garutman, so among the birds, I am that Vainateya. So that a very powerful, very, very powerful bird. So another place, some Vasuki, a very, very powerful, uh, say, snake. As in some other thing, a very, very powerful elephant, very, very powerful, uh, say, horse. So all these things, and again, a very, very powerful human being. And then very powerful, uh, say, um, uh, say, bowman, that is Rama. Rama's Shastra, Shastra Bhutamaham. So Rama was another man. So like that, this, all those specific manifestations. But then here, you are seeing everything. Good, bad, ugly, starting from a small insect to everything else. You are seeing as the manifestation of that Brahman, Vishwarupa. So here, that is the basic difference. What we have been hearing as Sarvatra Brahma Drushti. So whenever you look at a thing, you don't look at a thing with a, with an, with a sense of duality, but with the sense that this is again a manifestation of that Brahman only. So from that point of view, you are graduating from a slightly lower level called Upasana to a higher level called Sarvatra Brahma Drushti. That is, have seeing Brahman everywhere. So that is, a, that is the difference between uh, say the 10th chapter and the 11th chapter. So if we see the overall structure of this chapter, we have got 55 verses here, 55 verses. And then this is what we have seen, this Vishwarupa is something which is very, very popular with children particularly. <laughs> As children, we have seen so many films. You must have seen so many films in that, uh, say, say the Vishwarupa is shown, Vishwarupa is shown by Lord Krishna. So Vishwarupa, if we recall, Vishwarupa, he shows to his mother when he is a small child. As a small child, he is picking up, uh, say, some pieces of earth and then he is eating all that uh, soil. He is eating all that, uh, say, um, soil or earth. Then the mother, she taunts him. No, no, why, why are you eating this? Uh, then again, he says, no, 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 you please look into my mouth. I have not seen, I have, I have not eaten anything. I have not eaten any mitti. Then he opens his mouth and then he shows the whole universe in his mouth. So that mother Yashoda is astonished to see the whole universe in his in him. So that is the first time we hear about the Vishwarupa of Krishna, isn't it? The second time we hear about Vishwarupa is uh, say in that Kaurava Sabha when he goes as a messenger to the court of Duryodhana. There Duryodhana and other people they want to uh, say tie him up and they want to imprison him. So at that time, then again he shows that Vishwarupa and then all the people on there, the only people who can see that Vishwarupa are the sages who are present in that um, say, um, court. And then Dhritarashtra particularly requests this, uh, requests Krishna, all through my life I have been a blind man, let me see your um, say Vishwarupa. Then he exclusively grants that ability to see that Vishwarupa to Dhritarashtra and then Dhritarashtra sees that Vishwarupa. But then in spite of seeing uh, Vishwarupa, then again he again he gets back into his foolishness. Of course he says, again make me blind, having seen your Vishwarupa, I don't want to see this normal world. That, that is what he requests and then he again becomes blind. But even then that Vishwarupa thing is there in his mind, in his uh, say memory. But still having seen the Vishwarupa of Krishna, even then he his weakness for his son, and then his weakness for, um, uh, say, um, uh, basically what all the son has been requesting. So he can't overcome that. So that is how he is a perpetual uh, blind person. So this is the second occasion where we see Vishwarupa in. So we have seen in so many films also. The third occasion we see is here. That is on the battlefield when Arjuna is, um, say, is in a state of, um, say, a dilemma, a great dilemma, a sort of moral confusion. So there, a larger picture has to be given to this Arjuna about what is his role. You are after all a very small person in this whole <laughs> universe. You are after all, you are uh, a sort of a cog in the wheel of this dharma. This dharma is a huge wheel which is rotating. In that huge wheel, you are just a small cog in that wheel. So yes, so that is how you have to look at yourself. 
so you have to jolly well do your job so arjuna krishna is giving a larger picture to arjuna so here uh, in this uh, say vishwarupa sandarshana yoga there are 55 verses as i was saying and uh, mostly this is one uh, say chapter where there is a lot of description in all other chapters we did not see any description in all other chapters either krishna questions uh, i mean sorry arjuna questions and then krishna replies so krishna question and answer so that is what we have seen here there is a description because there is a visual there is a visual uh, say presented here that is lord krishna presenting his vishwarupa that is he may say he enables arjuna to see that uh, say the, the whole universe in him so where is he showing actually in his own body krishna is showing in his own body the whole universe and who is seeing only arjuna of course in the battlefield maybe at a distance all these people are there in uh, all their tents Duryodhana and Karna and all those people they are there in their tents but they are not able to see only Arjuna is able to see that thing because even when some uh, uh, say something some magic is done the person to whom who it is intended only that man can see not all others man not magic but some some other maya some um, uh, indrajala for example that type of indrajala so anyway this uh, say the there is a lot of description of this divine uh, say manifestation in this particular chapter then if we see the overall uh, say structure and all that uh, the very beginning shlokas arjuna is recapitulating what he has learned so far he has we have seen we have completed 10 chapters so of course in the first chapter basically his lamentation and then from 7 the second chapter onwards right up to the end of 10th chapter he has been listening to krishna he has been listening to krishna he has known about karma yoga he has known about some other thing he has known about dhyana yoga he has known about upasana he has known about what is called the sopadika brahma he has known about what is called nirupadika brahma all these things he has come to know so he is recapitulating all that he just recapitulates in the very first four um, say shlokas he recapitulates all that and then he says okay i uh, i now know that you are that supreme being but still i am having that lingering feeling i am having that lingering temptation i want to see that rupam i want to see your vishwarupam about which you told just in the last paragraph here last chapter he told about vistabhya hamidam krishnam ekamshena sthito jagat i just want to see that so then he asks krishna you please show that sort of thing uh say that um, uh, say that uh, uh, say rupam of yours then bhagavan he asks he says yes okay now i am going to show you my rupam but with your present eyes with your present state of uh, mind or present eyes you will not be able to see i am going to give you divya chakshu divya chakshu means the divine uh, eyes then what is this divine eyes divine eye does not mean something is suddenly some eyes have become uh, have been replaced and all that divya chakshu is basically a trained and a disciplined mind divyam dadami te chakshu means this is sukshmatam apaditam mana eva that is the mind which has become refined the mind which has become refined is capable of perceiving that brahman so in fact in the 10th chapter itself we have seen dadami buddhi yogam tam that is whoever comes to me whoever worships me what is it that i am going to do i am going to give them buddhi yogam dadami buddhi yogam tam ye maam upayanti ye something like that we have seen in the 10th chapter what lord does is he gives the proper buddhi he gives them the ability to see him he see his presence everywhere so that is what is this this divya drushti it is not as though Uh, lord krishna is giving uh, some special exclusive uh, say some sort of he is doing some sort of exclusive magic or anything like that but then he is enabling arjuna he is again telling him you are a person uh, say he has all through heard all this uh, karma yoga gnana yoga and all that so your mind is now refined you will be able to see so divya chakshu actually means the mind which has been refined so with your refined mind you will be able to see so with that assurance maybe that is a sort of assurance we have to take it as some sort of assurance you have heard all these things so far 
all this um, say um, um, uh, knowledge of brahman and all that so now your mind is refined and now you will be able to see so with that um, uh, say th that is the meaning of that uh, divya chakshu then <coughs> then what is the, the what is the meaning for us readers so when arjuna is able to see that we as readers we should also try to understand it and we should also try to see that and if arjuna's mind is refined we should also try to get to that level and then if our mind is also equally refined we will also be able to see that the vishwarupa sandar vishwarupa darshana so at the end of this chapter lord krishna is able to, i mean arjuna is able to say yes i am seeing your i am seeing your presence everywhere so that sort of feeling it has to come to our mind so if we achieve by that maybe by repeatedly going through the last previous chapters and all that we have to go through the previous chapters we have to again see the bhashyam meditate on that and then uh, say particularly this sixth chapter where there is a lot of uh, say self discipline involved that atma sanyama yoga the self discipline which is involved then again seventh and eighth chapters where there are some upasanas and all that with all that repeatedly revisiting all those chapters our mind will be refined to the extent that we will also be we will, we will also be able to see the vishwa roopa so that is what we have to infer for ourselves it is not arjuna alone who is seeing that vishwa roopa even our refined minds can see that vishwa roopa and then we are expected to see not only can see but we are also expected to see that vishwa roopa so that is what uh, it means then after that uh, say this fifth uh, this uh, verses 5 to 8 is krishna's reply and then he says the, in the eighth uh, say shloka he says natumam shakyase drashtum anenaiva swachakshusha with your eyes you will you will not be able to see i am going to give you divya chakshu then thereafter so he shows uh, say his divya vishwarupa and then that vishwarupa is initially commented by sanjaya sanjaya is another person who is also capable of seeing because sanjaya has been exclusively uh, say uh, blessed by sage vyasa Sanjaya is another wise man in this whole uh, Mahabharata. Sanjaya is the person who is narrating this whole episode to Dhritarashtra. So Sanjaya is a wise man. Even in that court, uh, say Kauravas court also, Sanjaya was able to see. And then in the very beginning of Mahabharata, there is a sloka by Vyasa. What I am saying, Aham Vedmi Shuko Vetti Sanjayo Vetti Va Nava. There is a line by, like that. That is Vyasa says. what i am saying in this whole mahabharata i know shuka knows sanjaya probably knows so that is what he says <laughs> so he he elevates that sanjaya to that level so all other people they are they are people bhishma drona and all those people they are not considered whereas sanjaya is considered sanjaya is supposed to be such a wise man so like that sanjaya sanjaya is see, is also seeing that um, vishwarupa and then he gives that we he a small description of vishwarupa to dhritarashtra sanjaya is basically narrating to dhritarashtra so sanjaya's comments are there from uh, verse 9 to verse 14 so all that splendor of appearance uh, say um, uh, the, he is describing then arjuna then arjuna's response to that vishwarupa arjuna also is able to see when arjuna sees that sees he is so overwhelmed by that and he starts he starts um, say just describing as to what he is seeing and then the very tone of arjuna changes and then the very emotion of arjuna changes because he is so overwhelmed he is so captivated by the presence of uh, say krishna that his overall his 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 very expression changes and basing on that expression even the meter here changes the chandas changes so so far we have been seeing some small anushtup shlokas so there the shloka also changes so the shloka also changes into longer sentences and then more descriptive uh, say vocabulary more there is a great more more descriptive vocabulary the is a meter also is a longer meter so there uh, because any poet depending on the mood and depending on the say uh, say theme at that particular place he has to change the Uh, chandas also he has to change the chandas because the prosody or that meter should be able to take that load take that load of emotion uh, that emotional load so that is what we see here also the arjuna's description is there in uh, say 
roughly about 17 shlokas that is from 15th to 31st 15th to 31st he is so overwhelmed uh, to see that huge um, say appearance where you know the, uh, the appearance which is having millions and millions of heads and then millions of millions of people are being devoured by them by, um, devoured by that or being swallowed by that so he is seeing a picture of pralaya you see vishwarupa can be of three types Vishwarupa, when we look at the world or Vishwam, whatever, there are three things, Srushti, Sthiti and Laya. He did not see Srushti, he did not have vision of Srushti, he did not have vision of Sthiti, whereas he had vision of that Pralaya. <laughs> so, this Pralaya Rupam was shown to this man. It is not as though this Vishwarupam is the whole picture of Lord Vishnu. It is only a small portion, it is only a small cosmic function which has been shown to Arjuna. So that is also that is all that is again we have to note so this pralaya rupam only was shown where in that pralaya all things were being devoured and the shiva lord shiva also is known for pralaya we all know that in all our puranas we say that lord shiva is the say that he performs that cosmic function for shiva for um, cosmic function of uh, resolution so then again we have to understand that there is no difference between shiva and vishnu so that is why we every day we say in our mantras Shivaya Vishnu Rupaya Vishnu Rupa, Shiva Rupaya Vishnave Shivasya Hrudayam Vishnu Vishnuascha Hrudayam Hrudayam Shivaha we say every day every morning. So whether it whether you call it Shiva or whether you call it Vishnu that is a cosmic function. In fact the dance of Shiva is again a very great symbol. The dance of Shiva if you have seen there is a, I, I, I think I refer to that book by Ananda Kumar Swami. The dance of Shiva is about this whole cosmic order Srushti, Sthiti and Laya. So, that again, that is something similar, somewhat similar, somewhat analogous to what we are seeing in this Vishwarupa. So, in Puranas, there are different types of, uh, say, expressions. Vishwarupa by Vishnu is another one, one type of expression. The dance of Shiva is another expression. So, th that is how we have to understand. It is not as though Shiva is something different and Vishnu is something different. Because all Puranas repeatedly say that Shiva and Vishnu are one and the same. So, anyway, coming back to this. So, this uh, Arjuna is so overwhelmed to see all so many faces, um, so, so, uh, that figure with so many heads and so many people are being devoured including uh, say all these Bhishma, Drona, Duryodhana and all these people they are being eaten up, chewed up by, all, by those uh, wild uh, say um, um, heads. Then uh, he sees all those people entering into those innumerable mouths of that uh, thing and then he realizes that he is the man, he is the one who is the establisher of that great order. He calls him Shashvata Dharma Gopta. Gopta means a protector. Shashvata Dharma Gopta. He is the protector of that eternal order. So that is how he, eternal dharma, eternal order. So he, that is how he, uh, he uh, say, terms him. Then, um, uh, say then again, uh, after that, Krishna replies. Krishna's reply is in about four slokas, 30, 32nd sloka to 35th. Then, he identif in which he identifies himself. Kalosmi Lokakshaya Krut. So, that is what he says. Arjuna, he asks him, I am seeing such a, um, uh, say, frightening, very, very frightening picture of yours. Who are you? You please tell me. Identify yourself. So there, the, uh, the Krishna, in Krishna's reply, he says, I am Kalaha. Kalaha. He is not saying, I am Supreme Brahman. He only showed one personality, one small personality of that Supreme Brahman. That is Kala. Kala means time. That wheel of time. That all devouring time, as somebody called it. All devouring time. Then the time which uh, puts an end to everybody. Then, in what is this, Amarakosha, we get the words, Kalo Dandadhara Shraddha Devo Vaivasvatovantakaha. There in the Kalo Dandadhara Shraddha Devo Vaivasvatovantakaha. That is how Amarakosha describes all these synonyms of uh, Lord Yama. So, Kala is one synonym for Lord Yama, time. Then, Dandadhara, one who is having that Danda, that Dando Damayatam, Damayatam, as we heard in uh, not cut open shit, here only. In this 10th chapter we heard Dando Damayatamasmi. Hmm? Then Dandadharaha, Shraddha Devaha, Vaivasvataha, Antakaha. Antakaha means one who puts an end to all these people. So these are all various synonyms of Yama. So he identifies himself as that time. Time which devours everything. And then 
Mm, you see, he also says, all what all you are seeing as your enemies, enemy forces, this Bhishma, Drona, Duryodhana and all, this Karna and all these people, I have already devoured them. You have seen them, you have seen all those people being chewed up by my so many innumerable uh, say, heads. And then you are only a Nimitta Matra. I have already eaten them up. You, for just for the sake of formality, you stand there and fight and then you kill them and then you become famous. You become famous, I will give the credit to you. The credit is not to me. I will give the credit to you. You become a hero. I don't want to be a hero. So that is what Krishna says in his reply, 32 to 30, 30 seconds, 2 to 35. Then at that point of time, Arjuna realizes that he is that supreme being and then he totally surrenders himself to uh, say Krishna. And then uh, he also recalls how in his childhood, how he had made jokes, made fun of Krishna, how he may, made jokes on Krishna. And then he called him, Ray, come here, Ray, go there. All types of, um, say, in fun. He had uh, ill-treated him also. All those things he recalled and then he feels bad and then he, apolog he apologizes to Krishna for all his bad, uh, for all his silly behavior in the beginning. So all that thing, sentimental thing goes on. Uh, in the, say some shlokas, 36, 36 to 46, that is about 11 shlokas. Then he also requests, uh, I am not able to see, I am no more able to see this Vishwarupa. You please withdraw and please original, appear in your original form. So then uh, following his request, uh, Lord Krishna withdraws the Vishwarupa. That is shown in 47 to 49. The final, uh, say last three shlokas, 52 to 55, there... Lord Krishna again gives an advice to uh, say Arjuna. That is, he advise, he advocates bhakti. Bhaktiyat vananyaya. Bhaktiyatu ananyaya bhaktiya. So, with this ananya bhakti, we have come across this word earlier also. Ananya bhakti is, anya bhakti is with the feeling of duality. Ananya bhakti is not with the feeling of duality. Understanding the nature of Brahman and loving it. And when you do puja also, you understand that you are not doing worship of some, some, some peculiar, somebody who is there outside and all that. You understand the real nature of that supreme reality and still you do puja because you are love, you do love to do that puja. You have to love it. So that is what Ananyaya Bhakti. Ananya Bhakti is as a matter of love, as a, uh, say you do that puja. So with that Bhakti, once you, if you do that, if you, if you uh, say worship me, then you will be able to completely realize me, completely know me. So that is what he says. Then the last shloka actually he says, the, the, in the last shloka, uh, it becomes the uh, say seed or introduction for the next, uh, next adhyaya. That is 12th adhyaya is about bhakti yoga. So this bhakti yoga, in that bhakti yoga, there is a complete description of the bhakti. So for that bhakti yoga, this last two shlokas, they become the uh, say starting point. So that is how this uh, whole chapter ends. So the whole chapter we see a, uh, uh, to a large extent we see a description of this Vishwarupa. A description of that Vishwarupa. And what exactly we see is, is only a fraction of the Supreme Being's manifestation. He has only shown his Laya Swarupa. He has not shown any other thing. And this Laya Swarupa also is Maya Mayam. This is only a manifestation in that Maya and not that Supreme uh, uh, say reality. So anyway, Arjuna wanted to see that. Arjuna wanted to see that. And then Krishna showed. And then he said, you should have that Sarvatra, Sarva, Sarvatra Brahma Bhavana. So with that point of view, this Vishwarupa Sandarshana Yoga starts. So uh, of course, Shankaracharya has not given any big introduction. Normally, he gives introduction where there are some doctrinal issues. For example, uh, Dvitiya Adhyaya, there is a doctrinal issue. Similarly, second Adhyaya, third Adhyaya. Uh, then again, some other adhyayas, we have seen some elaborate introduction. But here, of course, not much of introduction is given because it is only a smooth, uh, say, changeover from the earlier chapter to the present chapter. So, earlier chapter talked about the vibhuti. The present chapter is talking about the whole, uh, say, manifestation. So, let us read the first, uh, say, shloka. Arjuna Uvacha Madanugrahaya Paramam Guhya Madhyatma Sangnitam Yadvayoktam Vachastena Mohoyam Vigato Mama 
So he says, Arjuna says, he is, as I said, he is just recapitulating what all he has learnt earlier. Mad anugrahaya paramam guhyam. Mad anugrahaya means in order to bless me. Mad anugrahaya in order to bless me, in order to favor me, uh, in order to help me. So in that manner, we, we know the word anugraha bhashanam. Somebody, some Swamiji comes and then uh, as a matter of blessing, he speaks to all. So like that, anugraha is the meaning, I mean, the meaning is that. Mad anugrahaya in order to bless me, in order to help me. Paramam guhyam. That is extremely, uh, say, valuable thing, highly the a thing which is which has to be uh, very safely protected. Guhyam, we have seen the word guhyam. Guhyam need not necessarily mean a highly secretive thing, something which has to be very carefully protected. So that is the meaning of guhyam. So something which has that vidya, it should not be, it should not fall into bad hands. So the because if it falls into bad hands, it will be ridiculed. It should, it should be given to somebody who is, uh, say, of a disciplined mind, somebody who is in that frame of mind only has to be told that. So that paramam guhyam, that is a, say, extremely, uh, say, sacred and it's something which has to be protected with all great care. So that sort of thing is called guhyam. Then what is that? Adhyatma sangritam. Adhyat, adhyatma sangritam means that which is called adhyatma. Adhyatma, we know the meaning of adhyatma. Atmani iti adhyatmam, that which is inside you. What then, where was it told? In the very second adhyaya, it was told. What is inside you? That is nasato vidyate bhavo, na bhavo vidyate sataha. Then again, nayam hanti na hanyate. Then nainam chindanti shastrani. All these things, they are expressions, they are uh, say descriptions of that adhyatma. Adhyatma is the jiva. The jiva. That jiva is that um, uh, say antakarana vachinam chaitanyam jiva, isn't it? The, de the definition for jiva is that. So that jiva is something that again is eternal. So that was that was the fact which was told right from the beginning by Lord Krishna. So guhyam adhyatma sangnitam. What is called adhyatma has been told um, uh, told by you. Yat tvaya vuktam vachaha tena mohaha ayam vigato mama. Mama mohaha vigataha. My delusion is, has disappeared. My delusion has disappeared. Vigataha, it, is, it has disappeared. Mama moha. Then how has it disappeared? Yat tvaya uktam vachaha tena moha vigataha. Whatever has been told by you, because of that, my delusion has disappeared. So the overall shloka is like this. You have told me yat tvaya uktam vachaha. And whatever has been told by you, Tena, by that, Mama Moha, I am Moha Vigataha. My Moha is destroyed. Then, Mother Anugraha, you have told my in order to bless me, you have told me uh, that most, uh, say, highly uh, um, uh, valuable secret, very uh, secret knowledge, secret in the sense, high, to be protected, not something uh, which has to be hidden by from everybody. So, Adhyatma Sangnitam, you have told me. And my moha is gone. So in the next shloka also he says the same thing. Then let us see the bhashyam. Bhagavato vibhutayaha uktaha. Bhagavato vibhutayaha uktaha. Tatracha. Tatracha. Vishtabhyaha midam krutsnam. Vishtabhyaha midam krutsnam. Ekam shena sthito jagat. Ekam shena sthito jagat. Iti bhagavata abhihitam shrutva. Iti bhagavata abhihitam shrutva. Yat. Yat. Jagad Atma Rupam Jagad Atma Rupam Adhyam Aishwaram Adhyam Aishwaram Tat Sakshat Kartu Micham Tat Sakshat Kartu Micham Arjuna Vuvacha Arjuna Vuvacha Okay, Arjuna is saying like this Bhagavataha Vibhutaya Vuktaha Means all the Vibhu, many, several Vibhutis, not all, several Vibhutis of the Lord have been told. Then Tatracha, Tatracha means in that context uh, Krishna told one thing, Vishtabhya aham idam krutsnam yekam shena sthito jagat. We saw this in the last class. The last one, that is, by a mere fraction of my power, I am holding this whole universe, I am stabilizing this whole universe and I am there. So that is what he said. Iti bhagavata abhihitam shrutva. Abhihitam means that which has been told. Abhihitam. That which has been told by the Lord. Shrutva means having heard. Then, yet jagad, yet jagad atma rupam. Then, this jagat, 
he is his own rupa that is what he said vistabhya hamidam krishnam jagat ekamshena by a mere fraction of my power i am keeping this whole universe so which means that whole universe is his own rupam atma rupam isn't it so yat jagat atma rupam that jagat which is his own atma rupam that universe which is his own rupa his own appearance his own manifestation then adyam aishwaram adyam which has been there for eternally eternally means for a long long time adyam then aishwaram then adyam aishwaram uh, if this is uh, a small manifestation then what is your whole rupa that adyam aishwaram aishwaram is ishwara sibhavam is aishwaram one who is lording over everybody is ishwara isn't it that particular rupam tat sakshat kartum ichan desiring to have a vision of that tat sakshat kartum sakshat karanam sakshat karanam is that is having a first hand knowledge that is sakshat karanam having a first hand knowledge or a first hand experience so that is the thing sakshat you have you you personally see that so that is what is called sakshat साक्षात कर्तुम इच्छन इच्छन मीन्स डिजायरिंग यू नॉट डिजायरिंग टू हैव ए फर्स्ट हैंड नॉलेज डिजायरिंग टू हैव एन एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ व्हाट हैज बीन टोल्ड अर्जुन उवाच मद अनुग्रहाय मम अनुग्रहा परम निरतिशय गुह्यम गोप्यम अध्यात्म संगत आत्मात्म विवेक विषय निरतिशय वच वाक्यम तेन ते वचस मोहो विगत मम अवेक बुद्धि अपगतर्थ ओके मद अनुग्रहाय मम अनुग्रहार्थम इन आर्डर टू ब्लेस मी इन आर्डर टू हेल्प मी अनुग्रहार्थम देन परमम परमम मीन्स सुप्रीम निरतिशय बिकॉज देर इज नथिंग बियॉन्ड दट निरतिशय मीन्स देर इज नथिंग बियॉन्ड दट सातिशय मीन्स वेर देर इज समथिंग बियॉन्ड इट स प्लस अतिशय निरतिशय निस् प्लस अतिशय इज निरतिशय दट मीन्स देर इज नथिंग बियॉन्ड दट सो दिस गुह्यम दिस इज गोप्यम this particular vidya this particular uh, say knowledge which has been imparted by krishna to arjuna is something which has to be highly protected that is very uh, it has to be very safely conveyed to the eligible student so that is it means <coughs> what is that adhyatma sangnitam sangnitam sangna means a sign sangna is basically sign sangnitam is that which is called adhyatma sangnitam means that which is called or designated as adhyatma this is called adhyatma vidya isn't it so adhyatma vidya shankaracharya is also explaining what is this adhyatma vidya atma anatma viveka vishayam he says atma anatma viveka what is atma and what is anatma viveka this word also we have discussed earlier several times that is um, say <coughs> um, they say what um, he has told earlier नायम हंति न हन्यते देन अगेन आत्मा इज अकर्ता अभोक्ता एट्सेट्रा एट्सेट्रा आत्मा इज नॉट ए डूअर इट इज नॉट एन एंजॉयर इट इज समथिंग विच इज एटर्नल सो ऑल दोज थिंग्स वी हैव हर्ड सो ऑल दैट थिंग इज आत्मा अनात्म विवेक देन निरतिशय निरतिशय अगेन इज द सेम थिंग निरतिशय इज दट इज समथिंग विच इज अनपेरलड यया उत दट दट इज वट एवर हेज बीन टोल्ड बै यू वच वाक्यम वाक्यम देन तेन ते वचस by those words by those words moha ayam vigatah my moha my delusion is gone moha ayam vigatah mama <coughs> mama aviveka buddhi hi apagata all that aviveka buddhi aviveka buddhi means lack of discrimination viveka and opposite of aviveka so that is aviveka buddhi hi apagata means my that all that foolishness has disappeared and i am now able to see now i am able to understand what you have told Uh, earlier so he has just in the next two three shlokas also in the same vein it goes <coughs> let us see the next shloka bhavapya yauhi bhutanam bhavapya yauhi bhutanam shrutau vistara shomaya shrutau vistara shomaya tat tvattah kamala patraksha tvattah kamala patraksha mahatmyam api cha vyayam mahatmyam api cha vyayam so here he says <coughs> he again tells what all he has heard bhava apyayav bhava means origin bhava is origin 
apyaya apyaya means that is laya api plus aya apyaya aya gatau that is depart, departing bhava is origination apyaya is pralaya origination and dissolution bhava apyaya bhava apyaya hi bhutanam bhava and apyaya combinedly it becomes bhava apyaya dvivachanam <coughs> then bhutanam bhava apyaya that is the origination and destruction of all the beings that is being told you have physically shown you have you have told me of course he has not physically shown he is now showing you have told about all that thing how srishti takes place how sthiti is there how dissolution takes place and what is the cycle of creation uh, what is meant by brahma brahma loka and all those things you have told bhava bhava apyaya hi bhutanam shrutau vistarashah maya maya means by me vistarashah means in detail shrutau these two have been heard shrutau bhava apyaya shrutau when this bhava apyaya is in dvivachanam that shrutau their verb also should be in dvivachanam bhava apyaya shrutau those things have been heard by me they have been understood by me then tvattah kamala patraksha he kamala patraksha kamala patraksha is an appellation he is an address to the lord uh, krishna that is kamala patra kamala patra is the lotus petal the lotus petal has a very beautiful shape and then a very wide one also so this kamala patraksha is usually referred to uh, women when when we refer to the wide eyes of the women so here again for some handsome people also for some handsome men also it is described lord krishna is supposed to be somebody who is having some wide eyes white bright eyes so kamala patra aksha akshi means i kamala patra isha means that is wide eye the, the eye as wide as that that lotus petal so he kamala patra aksha twattah twattah means from you twattah twatt twattah from you mahatmyam apicha avyayam mahatmyam mahatma the, the, the state of being a mahatma is mahatmyam Mahatma is Maha plus Atma, Mahan Atma, S S A H. That is great Atma. Mahatmya means your greatness. Nothing more than that. Maha Mahatmya means greatness. Avyayam, Avyayam. That is undeclining, unending. Avyayam. That na vyeti iti Avyayam isn't it? That which does not perish, that which does not decline is Avyayam. So this shloka again is. um by way of recapitulation you have told about the origin of all the universes or uh, then again uh, srushti sthiti dissolution and all these things then again uh, your um, uh, say real nature has been told in the 7th adhyaya 7th and 9th adhyaya 9th adhyaya was called raja vidya rajaguhya yogam where uh, the nirupadhika brahma that supreme brahman that was told in that raja vidya um, um, yoga so all those things have been told to me um, he kamala patraksha so kincha kincha bhava utpatti hi bhava utpatti hi apyaya pralaya bhutanam apyaya pralaya bhutanam tau bhava apyayo tau bhava apyayo shrutau shrutau vistarasha shrutau vistarasha maya na samkshepata maya na samkshepata tvattah tvattah tvat sakashat ಶ್ರುತೆ ಓಕೆ ಇನ್ ಒನ್ ಲೈನ್ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟೆಡ್ ದಿ ಭಾಷ್ಯಂ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಭವ ಭವ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಭೂ ಭೂ ಧಾತು ಭೂ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಟು ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಎಕ್ಸಿಸ್ಟೆನ್ಸ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಭವ ಉತ್ಪತ್ತಿ ಒರಿಜಿನೇಷನ್ ದೆನ್ ಅಪ್ಯಯ ಈಸ್ ಪ್ರಳಯ ಅಪ್ಯಯ ಈಸ್ ಪ್ರಳಯ ಪ್ರಕರ್ಷೇಣ ಲೀಯತೆ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಡಿಸಲ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ದಿ ಕಾಸ್ ಕಾರಣ ದಿ ಕಾರ್ಯಂ ಆರ್ ದಿ ಎಫೆಕ್ಟ್ ರಿಸಾಲ್ವ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ದ ಕಾಸ್ when a part is broken it becomes it becomes earth only isn't it so likewise this earth the whole thing this whole universe when it is resolved it goes back into maya so that is what is that it goes back into brahman which is another manifestation in that nothing of maya only so this pralaya etc bhava apyayav shrutau vistarasha in great detail they have been told they have been 
से हर्ड बाय मी मया न संक्षेपतः नॉट इन नॉट इन ब्रीफ बट यू हैव टोल्ड इन डिटेल सो इन डिटेल आई इट हैज बीन हर्ड बाय मी त्वत्तः मीन्स त्वत् सकाशात त्वत् सकाशात मीन्स फ्रॉम यू त्वत् सकाशात हे कमलपत्र अक्षा आई एक्सप्लेन दिस कमलस्य पत्रम कमलपत्रम दट इज ए लोटस पेटल तद्वद अक्षिणी तद्वद मीन्स लाइक दट तत्वत लाइक दट अक्षिणी अक्षिणी इज द्विवचन दट इज ड्यूएल नंबर अक्षि अक्षिणी अक्षिणी अक्षि अक्षिणी इज द्विवचन ऐसे अक्षिणी यस्य तव सत्व कमलपत्राक्ष दट इज यू आर् तट कमलपत्राक्ष हे कमलपत्राक्ष महात्म्यम च अव्यय अव्यय मीन्स अक्षय दट विच डज नाट पेरीस अव्यय एंड अक्षर अर वन एंड सेम अव्यय अक्षय दट विच विच एज नो क्षय अर डिक्लाइन इट इज कॉल्ड अक्षय श्रुत इतने श्रुत अप्लाइज टू दिस् दर्ड श्लोक यथा आत्मा परमेश्वर द्रष्टुम्छा ते रूप ऐश्वर पुषोत्तम सो हि से डिविजन इज लाइक दट एवं मीन्स दिशा मीन्स इन दिस् मैनर एवं मीन्स ओके इट ईज सो एवं मीन्स दिस् मीन्स इट ईज सो एवं मीन्स इट ईज सो ई हेव नो डाउट अबउट इट I have no absolutely no dispute about it, so that is what it means. Eva method, yatha atha tvam, yatha uh, as you told, yatha atha atha means katha yesi. You are saying as you are saying, whatever you are saying, it is so. Eva method means it is so. Yatha atha means as you are saying, yatha atha tvam. आत्मा परमेश्वर आत्मा मीन्स अबउट यू अबउट यू वाट यू आर् टेलिंग अबउट युअर सेल हे परमेश्वर परम प्लस ईश्वर इज परमेश्वर ओ सुप्रीम ईश्वर ओ सुप्रीम बीइंग सो इज द फर्स्ट लाइन ओके एवं यथा आथ आथ मीन्स कथा येसी यू आर् सेयिंग आथ इज कथा येसी यू आर् सेयिंग देन द्रष्टुम इच्छा ते रूप ते रूप द्रष्टुम इच्छा दट ईज ई वाट टू सी युअर रियल रूप रियल रूपम इज नॉट देर रियल रूपम फॉर दट सुप्रीम ब्रह्मन इज नॉट देर बट देन ही सेज ते रूपम ऐश्वरम रूपम ही दट इज वॉट ही सेंग ऐश्वरम रूपम दट इज द रूपम विथ विच यू आर् लॉर्डिंग ओवर द होल यूनिवर्स सो दट सार्ट ऑफ रूपम सो अर्जुना ऑफकोर्स वी हेव टू गिव क्रेडिट टू अर्जुना दट ही बै नव ही आलसो हेज अंडरस्टूड एज मच एज वी हेव अंडरस्टूड आर मच मच मोर दैन वी हेव अंडरस्टूड बिकॉज वी आर इन दिस ट्वेंटी फस्ट सेंचुरी वी आर टोटली Um, say cut off from the tradition, and then we are reading through so many commentaries and what not. Whereas Arjuna was there right at the time uh, when all these Vedas were being written by uh, say Vedas were being edited by sage Veda Vyasa, and then he learnt the Vedas as a Kshatriya. He learnt Vedas, so he was no doubt a very a very learned man. So uh, he is not one who will ask for a physical rupam. <coughs> so he knows he knows the tattvam of the Lord, but still. Out of curiosity, he wants to see this Aishwaram Rupam. Aishwaram Rupam is that Rupam with which he is lording over the universe. That Maya Mayam Rupam, as uh, say Nelakantha Acharya writes, the Rupam Drastu Michami. Drastu Michami means I want to see Aishwaram Rupam. Aishwaram means that is Ishwarasya Bhavam Aishwaram Aishwaryam. So Aishwaram Rupam is that which by that Rupa with which you are lording over the whole thing. हे पुरुषोत्तम पुरुषोत्तम आई टोल यू पुरुषोत्तम डज नॉट नॉर्मली पुरुषोत्तम नॉर्मली मीन्स एक्सलेंट पर्सन पुरुष प्लस उत्तम पुरुषोत्तम बट इन गीता इट हैज अ टेक्निकल मीनिंग बिकॉज वी आर हैविंग ए चैप्टर बाय दैट नेम वी आर हैविंग ए चैप्टर दैट फिफ्टीन चैप्टर पुरुषोत्तम प्राप्ति योग सो देर एट द एंड ऑफ दट श्लोक एट द एंड ऑफ दट चैप्टर ही सेज यस्मात क्षरमतीतो हम अक्षरा चर्जुन Uh, some such shloka is there. Tasmat purushottama. That is what he was saying. That he says. That is, I am beyond this aksharam. I am beyond this aksharam. So that which is aksha, uh, beyond this sharam universe, and then beyond that Maya, 
he is that supreme thing called supreme reality supreme brahman so that is what is referred to by the word purushottama so arjuna by now knows that krishna is nothing but purushottama and then he is saying okay still i want to i am tempted to see your rupam so it is more out of curiosity more out of temptation and of course for the sake of all of us for the sake of the readers drashtum ichhami te rupam okay let us read the bhashyam evam etat ज्ञानैश्वर्यशक्तिबलवीर्यतेजोपन्न मीन इट इज सो न अथा नाट अदरवैज न अथा मीन नाट अदरवैज यथा येन प्रकारेण दट ईज जस्ट ऐस यू टोल आथ नाट टोल कथयसी यू आर् टेलिंग कथयसी देन म आत्मा परमेश्वर हे परमेश्वर वट एवर डिस्क्रिप्शन यू आर् टेलिंग अबउट युवर सेलफ इट ईज टोटली इट ईज अंडर्स्टूड बै मी ई हेव प्रॉपर्ली अंडर्स्टूड इट तथा ईवन देन आउट ऑफ स्टील सम टेम्पटेशन सम लिंगरिंग टेम्पटेशन तथा द्रष्टुम्छा ई वाट टू सी ते तव ज्ञानैश्वर्य शक्ति बल वीर्य तेजोभिसंपन्न ऐश्वर वैष्णव रूपम बिकॉज द ह्यूमन बीइंग इज मोर कंफर्टबल विथ समबडी हू इज ए वेरी एक्सलेंट बॉस इज एंट इट even for this universe if somebody says oh, okay you are the brahman you are not very comfortable if somebody says if vedanta says you are brahman we are not comfortable we still want to do some puja we still want to do some upasana <laughs> i was telling this to i was telling about the episode this madhusudana saraswati madhusudana saraswati who wrote advaita siddhi and all those huge eminent grandhas he himself he was a very great krishna bhakta he was a very great krishna bhakta and then it is not as though he was doing it out of ignorance he was he was a highly evolved man and uh, as i just as we were just now discussing puja or bhakti is something love it is basically it is of the nature of love it is uh, with that love in fact if you we have to read uh, another book called narada bhakti sutra i think i mentioned that book also narada bhakti sutra where uh, say he describes what is the nature of bhakti 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 is of the nature of love satvasmin parama prema roopa then amruta swaroopa cha it says the next uh, sutra says amruta swaroopa that is when you are uh, performing it it is of the nature of prema you are showing your love but then what you are feeling is amruta amruta swaroopa when you are doing karma you don't experience that amruta when you are doing upasana you don't experience that amruta when you are doing something else when you are doing some atma samyama yoga and all those things yo yoga abhyasa shama dama etc you don't feel that amruta whereas you realize that amruta when you are doing bhakti so that is that is where bhakti is slightly distinct from all other things so he param tathapi drashtum ichhami so that that is why we human being feels comfortable with why some form of worship he wants to see some sort of physical uh, say thing in front of him so what is that physical thing gyana aishwarya shakti bala veerya tejobhi sampannam all these things are only fraction are, are just certain features isn't it gyanam aishwaryam shakti bala veerya these are all relative things only there is not something which is absolute these are all relative things gyanam is knowledge aishwarya ईश्वरस्य भावम इज ऐश्वर्य दट ईज एबिलिटी टू लॉर्ड ओवर एवरीथिंग देन शक्ति शक्ति इज अगेन से पवर देन बलम इज फिजिकल स्ट्रेंथ देन वीर्य वीर्य मीन एक्चुअली मीन वैलर देन तेज तेज इज दट स्पिरीट हई स्पिरीटेडनेस दट हई स्पिरीटेडनेस इज काल तेज तेजस् इज ऐक्चुअली मीन फायर पृथ्वी व्यापस तेजो वायर आकाश फायर मीन ए फायर इज स्पिरीट मीन ए हईली स्पिरीटेड दट ईज एंथूसियाजम टू डू उत्साह 
we came across uh, that meaning also earlier virya tejaha utsaha so that utsaha that enthusiasm then vaishnavam roopam that vishnu's roopam vaishnavam roopam is that vishnu's roopam aditya nam aham vishnu he said isn't it so that sort of roopam i want to see so that is what is the thing we will see in the next class om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate पूर्णस्य से पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमेवशिष्य ओं शाति शाति शाति